as I mentioned, is it takes them back into the top four with eight games to go. They are two points clear of Athletic Club. Luis, uh, watch this game for us. Uh, overall, Athletic, good for the win, Luis? Good enough, uh, to be honest. They, they started very well the game with a great intensity, creating chances. Uh, I think the Memphis gave that extra uh, to the team, but uh, it was uh, about uh, scoring that uh, goal. And the team, as always, starts sitting back, uh, getting deeper and deeper, and then uh, Villarreal, that is in a great form, uh, started getting better and better and creating chances in the second half. Uh, the, that first equaliser from Villarreal arrived uh, very quick, so Atletico Madrid needed to, to change. We saw Simeone start changing in the, the shape of the team, start bringing new players with Correa, with Morata, and uh, because of those changes, had the chance in the last minute. When previous, just five minutes just before of that chance, Villarreal could have scored the second one and get the three points. So in the end, I think it was, uh, it, it was more fair, to be honest, a, a draw. But Atletico Madrid, as always, as Shaka just mentioned it, with a little bit of drama, got the three points very needed to get in the top four because uh, this Atletico Madrid was built to fight for the Champions League and they are back to the top four. And of course, they're in the Champions League, they're in the quarterfinals, they're on the easier side of the draw, no doubt about that. And you take a look, they obviously take Borussia Dortmund uh, on later on in the month. What is the expectations from the Atleti fans going in to that quarterfinal, Luis? Right now, a little bit of concerns because uh, mm. we don't know what we are going to find out. What is the team that we're going to see? We're going to see the teams who play against Cadiz and Los, or the, the team that today, for 20 minutes, it was good, but then it was very bad. And uh, we are going to face the second game. We cannot forget that Atletico Madrid is very good, almost unbeatable this season. Only one game they lost against Barcelona just a week ago. But away, it's a team that it struggles so much. And let's don't forget that the first game is going to be at the Metropolitano. And the second one, we have to go to the Signal Iduna Park. And we all know what the atmosphere is created there by the fans or by uh, Dortmund, that they are in a great form also. So, honestly, there's a lot of concerns. If they don't manage to get a good result, and a good result, I mean a win, 1-0, 2-0, and arrive there and know that with, exper uh, with experience of Simeone and make a very cagey game, and make lose the time and maybe on a contact attack get their goal. I think that uh, um, uh, Borussia Dortmund, by the time that they are right now with the confidence, I think they are a little bit favourites. I will give it 60-40. Real Madrid don't look like dropping any points really, knew they, and letting Barcelona into this title race. As they sit eight points clear at the top of the table, no Vinicius <laughs> Jr., uh, no problem uh, against Athletic Club. Rodrigo fills his boots, uh, says the front page of Marca. Prince Charming. Uh, says the front page of Ass, uh, which is quite interesting because he's a little bit like Prince Harry in that he's never going to be king. You've got Kylian Mbappe coming in, you've got Vinicius Jr, and then you've got Rodrigo, very much third in the pecking order of players who like to come in from the left-hand side. What do you do if you're Rodrigo, Luis, over the summer? Do you just sit and say, look, I'm going to fight for my place, I'm at Real Madrid, wherever I go, there's going to be a drop of quality, or do you think, look, I want to play football, I want to start games, I want to be appreciated, I'm going to move on? Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a great question, Dan, and a very difficult to, to, to call it because you have to be in his boots. He's got everything, but he needs the confidence. And when he's been lacking in confidence is when we've seen those talks with, uh, with Ancelotti, ins and outs, some uh, misunderstanding, let's call it this way. So in the end, it's a great call, the one he has to do. I think that he's going to stay, he's going to try to give because it is a long season for Real Madrid, almost 70 games every single season, and you are going to give minutes to everyone. And I would love to see that strike force, Mbappé, Vinicius Juniors, and Rodrigo, three top, top strikers for make Real Madrid almost unbeatable. What would you do, Shan? Um, wait to see, in all honesty. Wait to see what? Wait, wait to see what happens and, and how Ancelotti plays you. And, and I, I, I got you, I, Rodrigo has been battling for, to play in his, his preferred position for some time, but there's no denying um, his value to, to Real Madrid and, and to the successes over the, over the last couple of seasons. So while Kylian Mbappe comes in, um, I, 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 Ancelotti just has this way of, of getting the best out of players, understanding what's needed of them individually. Um, and we sang his praises as a man-manager. And from Rodrigo, I, I wait to see what he has in store for me.
and uh, before I, I make any uh, final decisions. Uh, there's no La Liga action uh, this weekend because of the Copa del Rey final in Seville. We'll see Athletic Club take on at Mallorca. That game will be live on ESPN+. Plus. Our coverage of that final starts at 3.30 Eastern.